now I want to go into um, culture. So the reason why it's important to start with the concept of race is to see it as related to culture, but not the same thing. And sometimes we conflate them, and it's important that we understand um, the distinct differences. So, um, so the slides that I went just uh, through and showed you on uh, Unit 1, those are my slides, right? And the ones that I'm now showing you, for the most part, are the slides that you can get online. So um, define, uh, the, this section is going to define key terms from the field of cultural competency, culture, cultural group, cultural collision, um, and cultural competency. Discuss ways in which the cultural group that makes up the criminal justice system, or whatever system it may be, um, collides with cultural groups within the community in which you live and work and distinguish characteristics of culturally competent um, criminal justice system or the system that you work in. So when you think about the word culture, what comes to, know, to mind? Habits and ways of traditions. Of yes. Certain yes, habits, ways, traditions that get passed on or communicated, right? Um, so, so essentially, and so that can have things to do with race or not at all to do with race, right? So we have work cultures right we have cultures at home um, we have those family cultures and traditions all right so culture uh, the concept of culture is broader than race and gender culture is a community shared set of norms practices beliefs values traditions customs history and means of expression that affects among other things how we analyze judge and interpret information, behavior, and perceptions. So our culture is valuable. It's also informing us continually about how we're looking at the world. So what are the visible and indivisible aspects of the criminal justice system? And we can actually juxtapose you all's system. Um, are there any visible aspects of, of what you do so when people are walking in that communicates you're in this system um, so you can use your system or you can use a criminal justice system what are some examples well something visible in our our folks is that automatically because they're applying for food assistance it automatically puts them into a category so I mean that's something that is and it's not just based on race or it's not based on culture or anything. It's based on just automatically you're just put into a category. Mm -hmm. You know, so people will visibly say, oh, well, you're on food stamps? Mm -hmm. You know, or something like that. So it goes, right. along, it goes along with that kind of line. Right. Where you're just automatically categorized as something or, or made judgment of. Mm -hmm. So we have a, a class distinction, right, when people walk in here. Oftentimes, they're unemployed or underemployed um, versus the people who are working um, or um, also walking in. I noticed that things are locked and secure, right? So going through a metal detector tells me something, right? There are people who have access and people who don't have access. Um, what else? What are some other visual symbols that say, this is us and this is you? Clothing. What's that? Clothing. Okay, so sometimes the way that we dress um, can communicate that um, we're not, um, we're on the other side of the glass and, and not that side, right? Okay. Your badge. Okay, we have badge, which is our credentials, right? Not everyone has that, so that's an aspect of a privilege to get that, right? Limited group of people who have access. Okay. So, um, what might then be some <clears throat> invisible, <clears throat> excuse me, invisible aspects of your um, system that is conveyed through your culture? Body language. Okay. How so? So people won't make eye contact. Okay. And if, if I'm um, communicating in a certain way through my body language um, through <clears throat> the people that I serve, that tells them something about me, right? Because we are continually communicating, whether verbally or non-verbally. 
Okay. What else? What biases might we have? And you, you kind of suggested that earlier, right? And here's another thing. So um, folks that have gone through like criminal justice, you know, they've been sent to prison. Mm -hmm. It'll be, it, you know, they might be a level eight when they leave prison. Mm -hmm. And their level eight stays with them mm -hmm. until forever. Mm -hmm. So no matter what, like if they get a traffic stop or something like that, it's going to go back to that same thing. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, you were a level eight. Right. Mm -hmm. So it never is, a level eight means that you are, have several felonies and you had a dangerous crime. Mm -hmm. So, so just for instance, this person has 15 years of 15 years of incarceration, mm -hmm. and they end up getting uh, a deferred judgment. But the counselors in their new classes that they're taking are saying that because you're now level C in their in their world. You know things like that. So what happens is they they get stuck with these labels of, okay, so you were a level eight when you were in federal prison. Now that you're in community corrections or if you're in you know doing community classes, now you're all of a sudden you're a level C. That means you're still this dangerous level eight person. Where those are the invisible things that us as 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 workers with folks, we don't get to see that you know how they're treated. That okay, we're looking through this this file and we see. Oh my gosh! You have this, 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 and this, and this, right. and and you're then you know you're level C or you're level eight or whatever kind of categorized by the Department of Corrections or mm -hmm. or things like that in criminal justice, where they're saying, okay, well this is and that stays with you, right? That stigma or that that level stays with you no matter what, right. regardless if you're now in a deferred judgment for a traffic, mm -hmm. you know, violations and things like that, and you have to go through a class. You know, or something so, oh, well, this is you. Mm -hmm. You know, no, this was me 15 years ago, but mm -hmm. this is me now, a deferred judgment right. for traffic right. you know, or, or something. So. Right, and so that's a really good example of, uh, as you stated, it's stigma, right? Stigma, it follows with us. Something that, um, that we did or is associated with us continues with us, and we can't ever shake that, right? right. And so we know that working with um, uh, people who have been justice involved or, or criminalized, um, that stigma follows through, right? Whether it's um, through DOC or through the you know county jail systems, um, that comes in into services. And if we have that kind of bias against that, whatever a particular crime might be, or look at a person differently, then that is exactly right. That's an un invisible kind of. Um, you know, part of our culture or our own values mm -hmm. that we're carrying into our work. And we all do, right? Mm -hmm. And the key is not necessarily about, oh, you have a bias, you're a bad person. It's the opposite. We all have biases. It's how do we kind of be conscious of them so that when they come up, we can then reframe our thinking. So this is an image of, you know, the, the pyramid or the iceberg, right? So the, the um, smallest part on top, and there's much a greater mass be below the surface. Um, so uh, at the top, above the, um, the water line, um, is those visible aspects of our culture. Symbols, things that say institutional, right? Um, jargon that we use, a lot of acronyms sometimes we speak in. Um, linear storytelling, what do you think that means? And why might that be an issue sometimes for the people that we serve? Because they want to um, sometimes brag about the things that have happened to them. Mm -hmm. So I might brag about it, or I might also just kind of start in the middle of a story that is most significant to them when you're trying to get them to, okay, we've got these forms to go through, we have a process to go through. That's a linear process, start to finish. Whereas a circular is, uh, I might start in the middle because that's most relevant to me right now. And um, as I mentioned, my husband's uh, family is Navajo. Um, it's actually a, a cultural, um, way uh, for many Native people um, to have more of a circular way of telling their story. And so um, even for him, being um, half Navajo, he has on Fridays is what he calls his Indian day. And that's when he schedules his Native clients, because he's also liaison to the mayor's office for 
um, American Indian Commission issues. And so he knows that it's going to take longer with some Indian people, particularly elder people, to get to what it is that they're needing. And that it's disrespectful to just kind of, let's go through the form, get to the point, right? Um, so, and some, some families still speak in a very circular way. Um, our visible aspects of our culture can be also around process and rules, right? Because our rules give us predictability, or we hope that they do, um, and less flexibility. Um, someone said the way that we dress, or suits, or clothing, or just, you know, looking more like office attire than street attire, um, sometimes could be adversarial, right? So, especially in the criminal justice system, or if you're appealing, if you've been denied benefits and now you need to, you know, prove why I should get those, um, fitting facts or rules or precedents. And the invisible below the waterline, or the larger part of the iceberg, are our motivations. As we've talked about, our motivations, our values, our preferences, our biases, our privileges, and our perceptions. So sometimes uh, a difficult thing can be acknowledging what our privileges are. Um, and so, you know, as an educated woman, I have privileges that come with that, right? So even though I'm a woman of color and there are certain um, things that, you know, are, are discriminatory uh, treatment around that, I also have privileges that um, women of color who are less educated don't have that I do, right? And so that way it's important for me, one, to never forget that and to use my privileges to help further the lives of folks who don't have those but who want to move forward. 